haunted house workers of Reddit. What's the worst thing you've witnessed? Story one, I've been waiting for this for a year. He'll start with the top three things I've seen there. A funny, a illegal, and a disgusting. Funny. A friend and I had been working as cannibals in a room with pots and pans, and we had full range of the room, meaning we could do whatever we wanted to do in this room, so we were redneck inbred cannibals, Jimmy Bob and Johnny Ray. We chased groups out into the parking lot from the inside all the time, but this one group of 13, 20 black guys and their girls game through, and we chased the guys from the exit of the haunt all the way to the Chick-fil-A about 300 meters while their girlfriends all just stood there laughing. Asterisk illegal. This was the first and last time I ever have and ever will work at a haunt because of this. I was supposed to be paid along with all the other workers there, around 25 core people. The ending pay should have been 1,400 USD for about 2.5 months of work. Also, they were not licensed or anything. I broke my toe there and they would not cover my medical bill. I then cracked to ribs there doing the act they assigned me. The act, you may ask was swinging 20 feet above concrete slab in a climbing harness on a zip line. What happened was someone else used my harness and lines for some reason, and I could not see properly due to the lights being shut off early and never given a helmet with a light. So my harness was completely changed, and my carabiner was changed from my locking one to someone's gourmet carabiner, resulting me to slip and fall out, fall five feet onto a wooden wall, then 15 to the concrete slab resulting in two cracked ribs and a major headache. They would not pay for my medical bills, which came to 2700 including my broken toe. They also had underage people working there past legal curfews and driving times. They also tried to say we all volunteered our time without getting paid when we signed something else. Oh, and underage drinking, candy abuse, and no, we're not talking about some candy. We're talking meth, candy, pills, ET3. They're still in operation today, BTW. Disgusting. Two employees were molested by customers and the owners and managers did nothing. Bathrooms were clogged for a solid month, resulting in guys peeing on the walls, in cups. Food was just re-microwaved for us to eat some nights. Taco Bell, McDonald's, Pizza Hut. People getting hurt there and not being taken to the hospital to the trash never being taken out unless kids were fed up with the smell and sight of it. Hopefully this doesn't get buried, as I would love to get my story out about this place and some haunts in general. I have a couple good stories about the place, but mostly bad. Extra funny. I made Cam Newton the former all-star quarterback for Auburn body check me because I scared the cow out of him and his two offensive guards. He apologized, and we laughed about it afterwards. Story two. I used to work in a very prominent haunted attraction in the Northeast continuously for four years. While working, I've given people panic asthma attacks, forced them into fake walls, gotten them to trip and fall, and even got pissed on. I was wearing black and a guy comes up, unzips his pants, and proceeds to take a leak on my foot. I moved my foot and scared the cow out of him, I presume with his willy still out. I got the guy removed from the attraction for being a drunk, unpleasant person soon after, as he was shouting expletives and being belligerent to other customers and volunteers. I have made large men scream like little girls. Feelsgoodman.jpg I've seen some belligerent behavior from people who think it's funny to show up to these attractions drunk or otherwise impaired. I was a volunteer throughout my working there. Not one person got paid for any of the time spent setting up the attraction or working there during hours of operation. All proceeds went to various local charities and still do today. Please, people, have respect for yourself and others, including the workers, when you go to haunted attractions by not getting drunk beforehand and not being high while going through. Story 3. Not quite on topic, but there was a story a few years ago about tools used in a murder being hidden in a haunted house nearby. The media sensationalized it quite a bit. The haunted house debunked it on their Facebook. It's time to set the record straight. There are a lot of rumors circulating right now about a prop from our attraction being used in a local crime. The fact is, no prop from redacted haunted attraction was used as a murder weapon. A garden tool belonging to an accomplice was hidden by him on our property. It was never at any time used as a prop. The redacted police department notified us in 2011 that an item of interest may be on our property. With our permission, the police came, searched, and found the garden tool hidden on the redacted property. Just to be clear, the props we use and approve at redacted are fake. They are made of foam, rubber, plastic, or some other lightweight material in order to ensure the safety of our customers and actors. This is a case of media sensationalism trying to draw the attention away from a murderer and placing the attention on the more interesting character. This is not new news. 
this crime occurred over a year and a half ago, and redacted, has already pleaded guilty and been sentenced for his role as an accomplice in helping to cover up a murder. Our thoughts and prayers remain with the victim's family. Story 4. Didn't happen to me, happened to my brother. He devised this special maze made up of prefab frames with painted brick on them. They were obviously just wood frames with fabric over them, but the point of it was to get through the scary maze. He himself, as coordinator and creator of this maze, was on a catwalk above dressed in all black with a walkie. The best part of this maze? He had two other volunteers outside who would move parts of the framework, and my brother would tell them what piece to move when people weren't looking. It was brilliant. Here are the two best occurrences. There were two girls, around 14, 15, walking through the maze, already frightened by the other actors, and looking confused around the maze, wondering what would jump out at them next. After bumping into dead ends for a while, they came to the pinch, which was a long hallway with a dead end around a sharp corner. They walk around the corner, see the dead end, and my brother tells one of the volunteers to move, blocking off the hallway. As the girls in tandem turn around and scream at the now blocked off hallway, he tells the other actor to move in closer. The girls literally kept screaming and holding each other as the two hallways closed in until they were practically touching them, only to have my brother tell the actors to duck out some of the other frameworks, leaving the two girls standing in a suddenly empty hallway. The second part is where he attempted to do this to a little old lady, who after seeing the back end of the hallway she just came through blocked off, proceeded to beat at the wall with her purse, kick the actor over wall and all, and walk over him to exit. Story 5. In high school, I volunteered for a haunted train ride. We weren't on the train itself, but alongside the tracks on either side. Guests would look out and see several scenes along the way. Our scene was a little campsite where I and a girl sat around a campfire. Then as the train passed, a masked guy with a chainsaw comes out revving his saw in our faces. He cuts off my fake arm, gives me a good slash across the chest, and then chases the girl into the tent. The tent was backlit so you could see the gruesome scene from the train. Obviously, we had no chain on the saw for safety. During one run, after he slashed my arm, the tip of the saw hit the ground pretty hard. It broke something at the end of the saw. The self-oiling mechanism of the saw that normally keeps the chain lubricated started squirting the oil out like crazy. So when he went to attack the girl in the tent, the oil started splashing all over her. In the heat of the moment, she felt this liquid hitting her and thought it was her own blood. She screamed in actual fear, thinking something had gone wrong and she was being murdered. He thought, wow, she's really getting into the part, and gave the saw a few extra revs to play along. We didn't know anything was wrong until after the train had passed and we realized she was still screaming. We had to find a different girl after that. Story 6. Opposite side of the walkway from the main cage includes several smaller cages that will fit one, three people, think prison bars with plenty of room to reach through. No masks on anyone, just really good makeup. Now Jane, she'd had a farming accident when she was young, lost one of her legs a few inches below the knee as a result, and had a prosthetic. We'd pulled off the prosthetic and smeared her leg nub with some Insta-scab, gives you a nice thick, crusty, bloody fake scab in like two minutes, and some stage blood to boot. She's screaming at people, he's got my leg, make him give it back, while in a straight jacket and I'm gnawing on her fake leg and or beating it against the bars while laughing at her screaming at them. We were having a grand old time of it. Then this woman, I'd guess her to be in her 20s, we were late teens ourselves, but adults, comes up to Jane, reaches through the bars saying, that's really cool. How'd you do that? And grabs Jane's leg nub. Jane smiles at her, says like this, and moves the muscles in her leg nub. I felt it myself. The sensation is unusual. This woman's mouth drops. She takes two steps back, screams, and drops into the fetal position, breathing like she is hyperventilating and sobbing hysterically all at once. Staff were called in after a few completely useless moments of trying to console her, and they carried her out. Jane got the award for best scare of the night that night, and later an epic scare award from the people running the haunted house. Story 7. I wasn't a worker, just a 13-year-old kid on a haunted hayride somewhere in northern PA. I was with two of my best friends and a girl I was crushing on hard. We had planned on just playing along with the ride because, you know, we were bad peach teenagers and weren't afraid of the dark. The hayride had gone through some forest and cornfields with strange sounds every so often. Screams, banging, gunshots, creepy headless people, vampires and werewolves. You know, the usual. We were having a good time and the girl was holding onto my arm tight, totally digging me. 
We get through most of it. The driver is telling us they have hot apple cider and cookies back at the house. But when we pass this creepy old barn, the wagon gets stuck in the mud. The horses get free somehow and gallop at full speed out of Dodge. This really maniacal laughter coming from the woods sends chills down my spine. The driver was freaking out, saying things like, this isn't supposed to happen, gets hit with an arrow to the neck and falls off. Three hooded figures come really quickly from the trees on either side of us with a chainsaw and an axe and pull him back into the trees to cut him up or something. He's screaming his head off, really flipping realistic, and we're all huddled at the far end of the wagon, pretty close to pissing through our pants. I guess it hadn't occurred to us, having been just playing along with it, that it was a part of the show. We were past that naivety. This was for reals for all we cared. Then this big guy came walking slowly up the path in front of us with a torch, wearing only torn up Carhartt overalls. He jumps up on the wagon, puts the torch up to his face, all scarred and bloody, and says, We didn't think you kids would make it this far, and now you're going to pay for it. The girlie passes away first, ha <laughs> or something to that effect, and goes reaching for the girl. Being the hot-headed 13-year-old I was, I jumped up and punched him square in the face. It doesn't do harm or anything to him, but he plays along, falls off the wagon, and we take off for the house, flat-out sprint for those cookies and hot cider. We get there, eat and drink, and just laugh about it. Later, I learn it was my friend's dad whom I punched. He still, to this day, tells me he'll get me back good. I got my first kiss because of that, so hells, yay. It's totally worth the embarrassment I get when he tells the story at our late summer bonfires. Story 8. Relaying a story from another actor who was stalking the hallways of our local house some years ago. Enter a young mother and father with their five-year-old daughter. The parents are being very encouraging, continually telling the girl, We've got you, you're safe, they're just playing, no one's going to hurt you, etc. Dad's in front, then mom, holding the girl to her chest such that the girl is looking behind them over mom's shoulder. He lets them get ahead of him in a dark patch of hallway then follows them as they enter a section that's better lit. Both parents are facing forward, so the girl is the first and only one to see the crazy man behind them with a crowbar, and her face lights up with a huge grin. While the parents continue their assurances, the actor mouths to the girl, You want me to scare them? Still grinning, she gives an excited nod. Okay, then counting with his fingers, one, two, three. He then screams bloody murder and slams the crowbar into the wooden walls. The whole party bolts down the hallway, two adults screaming for their lives accompanied by a delighted peal of five-year-old girl laughter. Edit, spelling and grammar. Story 9. Story 1. I was volunteering for my haunted HS as a fundraiser. The theme was hospital and my room was the morgue. It was a regular-sized classroom and we had the people walk around in a circle. In the middle were boxes we used as coffins and jumped out at people. I played the comic relief of warning of the dangers of hypertension. The last guy was in a box that looked just like a filing cabinet. Anyway, two girls came in, and they became so scared that as far as they could be from the door, they went into shock and couldn't move. They just kept screaming so loudly, move. I can't, I can't. Eventually, they ran right through everything, knocking it all over. They didn't even get to me. Story two. I was haunting in a cornfield maze. My manager had a three-foot chainsaw, and he was great at sneaking up on people. I wasn't that scary, but I was good at leading people into him. So I lead these kids to him and they're screaming and running. Then the chainsaw comes on and they're stuck between us. So they dodge into the corn off the path. Figuring this won't work, they come back and this one kid trips and falls and, you guessed it, got knighted by the chainsaw. He wouldn't move, so eventually my manager had to turn the chainsaw off and tell him to go away. Story three. I jumped out at a couple and the girl fell right down into the mud. She got up and said, oh, that's so not funny. And I just responded, yeah, I think your mask is better anyway and walked away. Story 10. I didn't work in a haunted house, but roamed the park. One year, I was dressed as a clown based on IT. I had heard a teenage girl screaming and running down the road from behind me. Now, at this point, I had another employee giving me updates on when she was getting near me. Next thing I know, I am hearing her say, I need to go to the bathroom. Don't scare me! I was standing directly in front of the women's bathroom entrance, and I just couldn't help myself. As she approached me through the fog, I turned around and screamed within a couple inches of her face. Her response was to immediately fall down onto the ground where she went completely silent. I stood over her for a second and then realized why she was not moving. I was standing over an 18-year-old girl who was currently peeing her pants on the ground of an amusement park in public. She slowly stood up holding her crotch and waddled into the bathroom. I see her parents, and better yet, a boyfriend walk up, and I just couldn't help but laugh. 
Fifteen minutes later, I see the mom walk into the bathroom with a brand new pair of sweatpants. I won Monster of the Night that night. But it wasn't the last time I made someone pee their pants by scaring them. Story 11. Not quite a haunted house employee, but back when I was living in Vancouver, Canada, I had decorated the house, which was quite massive with stones, plus it had the creepy trees in front of it, with a bunch of cobwebs, fake blood spatter, do not enter signs, a fog machine, and dry ice. For the extra mile, I had played creepy sound effects on the stereo that could be heard from down the street. There was only one light on, which was the house lamp post, not the city lamps, and it illuminated the front entrance porch with the old bench. I dressed up as a scarecrow, a blend of Freddy Krueger and Jeepers Creepers. I sat on that bench motionless. Needless to say, I had scared a few kids. However, there were some heads, high school teens, that I noticed. They were egging the house, ruining the decor, chucking empty beer and vodka bottles. And they also broke the fog machine. They then went on the scarecrow. Being six, four inches and quite big, I just stood up. They then proceeded to cow themselves. It took them at least 15 minutes to realize they got their asses handed to them and wallets taken. In that time, I just phoned the police, gave the cops the IDs, and they were sent off. Had to be the best Halloween I have ever had. Even better than lighting up of fireworks. Story 12. My dad used to make and run the haunted houses in town, so most nights I would go with him. This was common and fun for the both of us. While he was working, I would hang out at the front desk or go sit in a corner somewhere in the maze. This maze was pitch black. You could not see my balls if they were draped on your face. He was the only person that knew the whole maze, so one night he got the idea to take the chainsaw guy with him in a corner. The group had to find their way out by any means possible. This was before everybody had cell phones, so that wouldn't work. They felt for everything until they felt my dad's mask. The only words I heard were cow guys. There's something in here. At that point, the man with a chainsaw decided that now would be a good time to commence with the assisted loss of bladder control known as a chainsaw. The whole group broke a hole in the wall, plywood, and ran like mofos. Greatest night ever. They had to shut down for like an hour to get the replacement wall up. Story 13. I saw two teenage boys dragging their large mother through graveyard dirt by her arms, all of them screaming while I chewed on her ankle while playing a graveyard zombie. I have seen bored, haunted house actors chasing a tour bus of seniors with starter pistols. They fire blanks and chains and hammers on foot for blocks. I've seen two actors with a motorcycle build a ramp and come leaping out of the exit of the haunted house wielding a chainsaw. They chased this one poor couple through the parking lot, the girl sobbing and screaming, We're out! You have to stop now! Why isn't this ending? They did donuts, yelled yeehaw a lot, scared the pee diddles out of that couple, pooping, people crashing right through walls, fights with assholes, pee and blood and breathe from the chainsaw all night, every night, but the worst, I was the butcher that night. Electric knife, bloody apron, that sort of thing. My room ended in a long hall with an IR beam truck horn and some headlights mounted in a wall. Loud as a mofo and bright. Looks like a truck. Sounds like a truck. And in comes this dad. Just an average guy in his 40s. A little paunchy with glasses. He brought his son in. The son was way too young to be in our house, maybe 10 or 11. This guy came through and freaked out. I raced after him, hollering and swinging the electric knife around, and then he hit the truck. Boonk! I've never seen anyone shake quite like that. He grabbed his son and used him like a shield before sliding down the wall into a fetal position. At first, I didn't get how scared the guy really was and did the woogie-boogie thing. But after a bit, I realized he was frozen and gibbering. I broke character and took off the bloody apron. I tried to calm him down. His son seemed okay, but the guy, he was just stunned. I helped him to his feet, told him everything would be fine, and ran him through the secret doors the quiet way out of the house. He said, thanks. I felt pretty bad about that one. I am all for giving the customers their money's worth and for pushing the line when the customers are having fun, but that one really taught me to pay attention to the customer. There is a big difference between a playful scare and real terror, and the trick is balancing in the big divide between the two. Story 14. I have a pretty bad story from Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Hollywood. My friends and I were on the house of 1,000 corpses maze and came up on the scene from the movie where Dr. Satan is into someone with a hammer or some similar tool. Anyway, the guy's role was to be working on the fake body, then at intervals jump out at the people real quick and scare them. So we're passing him and boom, he jumps out. 
But he, like, lost grip on the hammer and it just flew out of his hand. Smack right in some big guy's head. He looked legitimately dazed for about ten seconds, then blinked and started laughing, while poor Dr. Satan is frantically consoling him and looking more worried than I've ever seen anyone. Close call, I guess. The guy kind of looked like Huel from Breaking Bad, so maybe that's why it didn't do any noticeable damage. Story 15. So I was working at a haunted trail one October. We had set pieces where guests would stop and have a mini-story told acted for them, and we also had random scares on the trail there, some screaming, some people jumping out, etc. I was at the beginning of the trail after they welcomed my visitors. My friend would roll out in front of people and pretend to be dead. They'd see her body, bad person out, walk around her and she'd appear a bit later. I would pop out as they walked by, all white with blood eyes and all black with an axe that dripped blood. The part I was on was a bit of a hill with a chain link fence on the left side. After I spooked them, I'd run the axe on the fence and breathe heavily behind them down the hill, where previously dead girl would jump out. So my friend does her thing and I hear these two girls screaming bloody murder and I think this'll be awesome. So I wait and pop out. It's about six mildly drunk sorority girls. They bad person the hell out. As I start creeping up behind them, one girl refuses to turn around and walk down the hill. She just keeps staring at me. Her buddy decides the best thing to do is rush away from me. So she drags her friend down the hill, making the friend fall and roll down. At the bottom, my dead friend pops out once more, and Tumble Girl tries her best to dash back up the hill, but Creepy Axe Man, me, is right there, so she just breaks down and cries. I saw her on campus the next day, and she was all sorts of bruised and cut up from tumbling down the hill. Pretty great time. Story 16. This will probably never get seen since this is already on the front page. Story 1. Back in high school, my friends and I thought it was hilarious to scare people at Six Flags during their fright fest. We were just high school punks, I look back on it ashamedly, but my buddy's girlfriend was saying all night how she was going to scare someone. She finally works up the courage, sneaks up behind some woman, and in her little squeaky voice says, Boo! The woman slowly, slowly turns and we can see she is an actress dressed as a zombie. She roars so goddamn loud and my buddy's girl starts crying. It was amazing. Story two. Same six flags ten years later. My wife and I took our nephews to Fright Fest. We do the walk, though, and they give the kids whistles to blow to get the monsters to stop. My older nephew was ten at the time and was acting all tough. Literally the first actress he encounters, she is dressed as a doll zombie thing. He starts rapid firing his whistle, standing frozen still. The actress pulls out her own whistle and starts blowing it in his face. They do this at each other for about ten seconds, then he starts sprinting off still whistling, away from us, with her chasing and whistling after him. Our whole family was crying laughing, and my wife is yelling at me to run after him, but I'm laughing so hard I can't breathe. Found him in a bush sitting next to the actress, still whistling in each other's faces. Story 17. In high school, I worked at Corn Maze. During the month of October, we had a separate haunted maze that was essentially a quarter-mile-long path with pneumatic-powered mannequins, countless props meant to creep people out, and actors of all ages, friends and family of the guys that designed it. We had drunk people come in all the time, teens, college students, the occasional group of housewives, etc. One night, a group of couples, mid-forties maybe, came around ten o'clock, and it seemed like they had all been out to dinner that night, had a few drinks, and decided to keep their babysitters at home, waiting another hour or so, while they enjoyed the haunted corn maze. While they're walking through the path, one of the actors, the designer's 11-year-old daughter in an old hockey goalie mask pops out of a prop coffin, and one of the men in the group freaks out and punches the little girl square in the face. The guy said it was a knee-jerk reaction, and he thought it was just another prop. The cops got involved, and after an hour or so of apologizing while the guy's wife cried in the background, the little girl finally said something along the lines of, I'm fine, just go home. Her dad, the designer, opted not to press charges under the condition that the guy never come back again and the cops let him leave. Todd Doctor. A grown man punched an 11-year-old girl in the face. Story 18. When I was in high school, my youth group would go to a haunted corn maze every year. The maze would be cut into a new design every year celebrating something. The 2010 design was for Boy Scouts' 100th anniversary, with one side being normal and the other being haunted. One of the leaders was a cop leading a group of students through it. One of the workers was a farmer with a shotgun that shot blanks. So when this same worker sneaked up behind them, he let a shot off. The leader turns, aiming his gun at the worker. 
The farmer freaks out, drops the shotgun, and says it's a blank. They didn't have a farmer with a shotgun next year. Story 19. One of my friends does this haunted house in his house every year and attracts some people on Halloween night. My friend has an in-ground pool in which he likes to make a wooden bridge going across eight feet deep water with a warning sign at the start of it. Here's the thing, though. When at least two people are crossing the bridge, someone dressed as a sea monster, which would look something like, would jump out really fast and get halfway up the bridge with a wooden ladder and scare people. To make things more unexpected, the person in the water would have a snorkel, or something like one to breathe underwater, then lunge out when the time was right, which was easy considering the mask has a movable jaw installed on it. It was my turn to do this. I was going good throughout the night. Good thing the pool was being heated before Halloween started. We also added a sickly green color to the water to give effect. Here's where things got really edgy. Around 8 p.m., during pitch black time, two girls, possibly around 13 or 14 years old, were about to cross the bridge. As soon as they got out into the middle, I lunged out at them. One of them got so scared she lunged back and fell over the railing. Her friend started screaming, stating she was a really bad swimmer. I tried to go after her, but one of my friends, who was hiding in the bushes observing the segment and not there to scare anyone, dived in and got her out. I was afraid with me trying to get her. I would scare her much, much more with the costume I had on. My friend got her out of the pool. She was barely conscious. So my friend, being a trained lifeguard, started performing CPR until she came back. She got back up and I got out of the pool saying I was sorry about what happened. She laughed and said I was just doing my job and I was good with my scare tactics. I was actually expecting her to slap me silly after what happened. I never forgot about that moment for the remainder of the night, so I tuned it down a bit so the same scenario wouldn't happen again. It's just way too scary to think about someone nearly getting injured while trying to get a good scare and have some fun for the night. Story 20. I was a part of a fraternity, sorority haunted house for charity, where sorority members would act as guides and lead groups of people through the fraternity house. Our themes would change each year, but the most memorable year for me was when we had each section room representing a separate horror movie. Saw, The Exorcist, Poltergeist, The Shining, and Halloween were among the movies that inspired sections of the tour. As an example, the guide would open a room with people chained to the wall, and the Saw theme music would be blaring, and a person in a Billy the Puppet costume would ride out from behind a tarp, and a recording of Jigsaw's voice would play, and the chained actors would scream and cry for help as fake legs or arms got chopped off. Then the guide would lead the guests to the next room, section. My section's theme was Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and my role was to hide behind a black tarp in a pitch-black hallway, flip on a strobe light, fire up and wield a chainsaw, sans chain, then sprint at the group while bellowing. I wore a Leatherface-esque mask and a trench coat and a scraggly brown wig. For the first hour of our haunted house each year, we'd have a tamed down kids hour where families would be guided through and not be exposed to as scary of an experience as later in the night. This also gave the guides a good chance to get used to the order of the rooms and better their intros and segues to each section. I thought it was probably in the best interest of all parties not to traumatize the children and stayed hidden through the first hour. Finally, it was announced that the crowd was older and we could pull out all stops. However, the men involved refrained from telling the female guides that I was hiding and a part of the tour. So when I came bursting out with a chainsaw over my head the first time the attendees were afraid. But they were intellectually prepared to be scared. The guides were definitely not ready for the ambush and gave out blood-curling screams and took off running out of legitimate fear. As you can imagine, that really freaked out the attendees and sent them into pandemonium when their guide took off out of fright. Hail a doctor. Scared fellow workers of haunted house worse than attendees. Story 21. Oh man, the stories I could tell. I got hired by a large company. There were between 20 and 50 actors working at any given time. I literally have over 100 stories. I was originally hired to do the animatronics, pneumatics, set design, prop design, etc. I ended up doing pretty much anything and everything, including security during working hours. Long, long, long days, especially on Thursday nights where everything that broke big during the week had to be fixed for Friday, Saturday rush. I've seen people pass out, flat out lose consciousness and control of their bladder intestines from being scared so bad. I've seen a 6'4", 300-pound football player get so scared he picked up his five tall girlfriend and used her as a human shield to push the actors out of the way. 
His face pushed hard into her back so he couldn't see as he rushed them with his girlfriend. That one actually ended without anyone getting hurt, just a few bruises. I was quite proud, though, in designing a few sets to be ADA compliant but adjustable, so it was tight for people not needing ADA compliance to fit through, but could be moved in seconds to give space for those requiring ADA standards. We had a squish wall. Imagine two very large balloons. They are 10 tall and 20 feet long. We had two lined up so it was 40 long, one on each side of a hallway. When inflated, they push from floor to ceiling, and you have to push and shove your way through the bags for the entire 40 feet. There is no light in this area, not that it would matter as the bags contort themselves to a near airtight seal around your face. We left a safety area eight inches tall at the very bottom. When we first set up the bag hall, we had them much closer and far less blow-by from the fans, so it was so strong you could put an eight, ten-year-old kid at the top of the entrance, and he could make it to the end without touching the ground. We eventually had to turn it way down after we had people getting stuck with panic attacks, lost jewelry, broken glasses and phones, etc. I did design quite an ingenious deflation device for both bags in case of emergency, far more than just unplugging the blowers, though. If you guys want any specific types of stories, gross, funny, sad, traumatic, etc., just let me know, and I'd be happy to oblige. Edit Clarity Story 22 Fortunately, I did not witness this one, but only heard about it. One of the rooms in the house was a mad scientist room. The scientist guy in the room acted crazy and waved around a huge cow tongue at the crowd while talking about what he would do with their organs. They didn't get a fresh tongue every night. It might be a week or three old before it starts grossing out the workers and had to get a new one. One night, a group of drunk frat guys comes, goes through the house. One of them grabbed the around three-week-old tongue and took a bite out of it. Even now, years later and getting the story secondhand, I still get grossed out over it. Story 23. I worked at one when I was in high school. Basically, how the scene played out was there was an inbred hillbilly cannibal sitting in a lawn chair screaming at our guests. He would say a cue, then a zombie would pounce from behind the chair and eat him. While the guests were distracted with that, someone would pull a drop window and further terrify them. I was the guy with the drop window. We got a call on the employee walkie-talkie system that there was a kid who wasn't taking the whole experience well, and we should tone it down a little bit when he comes through. My adolescent brain registered this as fudge with the kid as much as possible. Kid comes through visibly shaken with dried tears in his eyes. My colleagues do their zombie cannibal thing, and the kid starts flipping out. Now's my chance. I drop the window, get right into his face, and scream, I'm going to terminate your parents. Kid his pants while letting out the most horrifying scream I've ever heard in my life. Think Emily Rose having a really bad trip. Even worse, I was in charge of the air cannon, so when his friends pulled him out into the nearby hallway, I gave him a few bursts of that. Apparently, he collapsed in the next room and the higher-ups had to carry his cow-stained body out of the house. I had a nice chew-out session with my boss after that one. Story 24. I used to hate the guys who were arrogant, like they had to pay money to come to an entertainment venue just to prove that nothing could scare them. Totally overcompensating, so they were my targets. I have the creepiest blue eyes ever, not in a jar in real life. They are pretty in normal light, but crazy in black lighting. So I would get up extremely close to a target, make eye contact, and just sing a very monotone L.A. blah while slowly following them. The guy usually got a, hey, look, your girlfriend joke from his friends, but they were all pretty freaked out when I was still right there five minutes later. Another night, I would be a plant in a crowd coming through from the start. Sweatshirt, jeans, normal. About halfway through the trail, an actor dressed as Jason in our room would grab me out of the crowd and throw me against a cardboard wall. Stage combat, we blocked it all beforehand. I'm freaking the hell out the whole time, but not nearly as much as the rest of the group that I was with. Story 25. We had a haunted house in high school to raise money. It was in an abandoned house, and at the end we had a slice in steps. You could slide or walk down the steps. Well, this rather overweight woman decided she'd try the slide. She got stuck around one of the twists in the slide and started panicking. She was screaming and hollering, and those waiting in line to get in at the other side of the building just thought it was part of the haunted house. Eventually, the fire department showed up and got her out of the slide. Needless to say, that was our last slide on a haunted house. TLDR. Fat woman gets stuck in slide and ruins the fun for everyone. Story 26. About two years ago, there was this guy who tried to scare the actors. I was dressed as a psychotic, infected doctor, and all of a sudden, this man runs through my room. 
I play my part and then he's gone. A few minutes later, I notice him standing at the end of my room. I approach him in character, telling him to move on through the other rooms, no response. He was wielding, wielding two hatchets. He then laughed maniacally and ran from my haunt to the other haunts. There were six different themed haunts in the whole building, trying to scare us. We were not sure what he was going to do, so we called security. They couldn't find the guy because he ended up hiding in one of the haunts. They later found the guy, and it turns out he was high on cola, and he had intention to harm us. Glad we got him when we could. Story 27. I was figuring I would see more personal stories. I am seeing a lot of my friend's stories. I have a couple since Haunted House was my first job. I worked at one around the time Scream was out, so those masks were everywhere. I just happened to get assigned that costume, and I loved it. The setup I worked most days was a graveyard with hands peeking out of the ground and moving to hold people's attention. Everyone would walk by watching the graves, expecting something jumping out from behind a headstone or a partially open coffin on the left. But the real surprise was the blank wall concealed me standing in my scream costume on their right. I was told to just pop my head out as groups passed by or put my hand out and make a quick sharp noise to startle. Then they would run through the rest and continue on into pitch black hall with a 90 degree turn that they had to feel their way through. Well, I got bored with just popping my head out. So I started timing it out and seeing what I could get away with, try to integrate myself with the groups passing through. I got pretty silent about slipping in with a group passing through so that I could be standing in the middle of them before they knew I was even there. Well, this black family was passing through, and the mother was saying, I know that Coffin has a person in it. I can see them looking. You should just come out. I know you in there. There wasn't anyone in there. I slipped unnoticed into their huddle and just started casually walking with them. I made it through the whole graveyard with them. One of the teenagers actually grabbed my arm, preparing for the scare from the graveyard, which freaked me out because I was told that if I touch anyone, I was fired. We were all staring at the graveyard and about to make it into the pitch black hall with a turn, and they start saying things like, Tist! That room wasn't scary, just some stupid little hands in a graveyard? That cow ain't scary. Now we just going into another room, this ain't scary. At which point I said, can you guys see anything in there? This is when they started to realize that I was literally standing in the middle of them. And the mother looks at me and screams and sprints faster than I would have guessed a woman her size could, straight into a pitch black hall. It would all be fine except there was a turn, and I heard her smack directly into the wall in front of her. She kept screaming, my nose, I broke my nose. So I pulled my mask off, broke out my flashlight, and found her holding her nose as it was dripping large amounts of blood. I jumped over one of the fake walls, grabbed a supervisor, and blocked people while they escorted her out. She got refunded and I got no reprimand. Apparently she was pretty pissed. Another story, while I was behind my fake wall, I would get bored and occasionally climb up and watch people pass through the chainsaw room, which I backed up to. I would have a bird's eye view of the scariest room for some people. This one group was going through, and I noticed that this short girl with cola bottle glasses was extra skittish, so I made a note to watch her reaction to the chainsaw room. Sure enough, I was right to want to watch that one. She was there with a taller couple. I hear her coming into the last room, so I climb to my perch. The scene is an operating table with a fake corpse on it mangled. The scare is when the group gets in the room guy with a burlap mask, kicks a door open, and starts a chainsaw and revs it a whole bunch. People scream and run to the exit. This poor girl was losing it before she got into the room. I hear her going on about how she just wants out. She's in near meltdown mode. The couple she is going with are just holding hands tightly. She pushes her way forward, seeing the emergency red exit sign. She starts to evaluate the situation and look at the gruesome display, then the exit sign back to the gruesome display. Then the kick and chainsaw come in, and instead of running for the exit like I thought she would, she turned 180 and sprints backwards at her friends who step apart but don't release their hands in time. I watch helplessly as her face makes directly interlocked hands, like Red Rover if you ever played that in school. I watch her get clotheslined and see her glasses go soaring off her face, landing on the opposite side of gruesome, mangled body. She sits cross-legged, repeatedly screaming, my glasses, over and over, at an interval that I know she can't keep up without passing out. I am panicked at this point. Burlap head couldn't see cow, and the couple are fumbling around trying to find glasses for their now useless screaming friend, and I know they are frigid if I we were playing hot or colder. I try to help yelling down they are on the other side of the dead body without thinking about the fact that I am in a full costume hovering above them. This is enough to send them over the top in full flight mode, 
leaving their screaming friend to fend for herself. She is now hyperventilating and sobbing uncontrollably, still cross-legged in the middle of the floor. I am yelling directions at Burlap Head to find her glasses. He finally does. I try to shine my flashlight down to make it a little better, knowing that Burlap Head does not have a flashlight since his hands are full. It was pretty interesting. I know the look on a person's face when they decide to give up on someone and abandon them. I think that the most annoying thing working at a haunted house was the bros that would come through in packs and just cow talk the whole time. This isn't scary. This is so dumb. And they can't touch you and occasionally push some workers around. I don't understand why they would pay money to be all flipping brave for their friends. It is a haunted house. You are supposed to get yourself all psyched out for it. If you're going to be a big, brave man, at least bring a girl with you so you're working on impressing someone. Best thing you can do for your experience. Use your friend's first name loudly and when you think someone can overhear it. That is, was easily my favorite thing to give WTF. If I hear someone's first name, I will make a mental note and work extra hard and make sure I use Theor first name and address them directly. Usually makes it way more intense. I have seen people get so upset over it, too. It makes it very personal and very creepy. Story 28. Family story here. My mom is really easy to scare, and when my parents were dating, my dad took her to a haunted house. There was a group of people they were following, and the two of them were at the very end. So they're going through this haunted house, and one of the roaming actors keeps doubling back to scare my mom since she reacts loudly every time. The last time he comes up, he comes up from behind, and my dad spots him first. Being the last person in the line, and knowing that no one else saw the guy, my dad signals the guy to come over quietly, and when he does, my dad switched his hand, which my mom had been holding with the worker's hand, and then stops walking. She walked along for about five minutes holding the hand of this worker as my dad walked behind the group, until something scared her enough that she turned to my dad for, I guess, protection. Turned around to find that actor staring her in the face. Story 29. This isn't really what you were asking for, but this was an amazing experience. I know this is long, but it's worth it. I went to this place around Portland, Oregon with a friend. It was put on by a local actors club or something, so you know it was legit. It was supposed to be some zombie adventure, and that's all we knew. We went on Halloween night late, so it wasn't crowded, which was awesome. Driving into the parking lot, there were bar wire fences around the whole place, as well as some guard towers and ish, and the line to get your tickets was like the quarantine zones you start in at the beginning of The Last of Us. There was an intercom with someone explaining the signs of infection and how to terminate a zombie, etc. It sounded really good. All the workers wore army gear and looked legit as you went through the checkpoint. People were herded into different horse stalls, it was a fairground, to wait for your turn to start. While waiting there, we talked with a few others in our group. After 15 minutes or so, we were met by the sergeant, he always yelled. He said he would give us a tour of the base before showing us to the where the civilians stayed. Along the way, randomly, a guy in our group started coughing a lot. I thought nothing of it. Then the sergeant yelled to get away from him. He was flipping turning. This normal-seeming guy we had met at the entrance and chatted with was in on it. So they fought for a bit, then he shot and terminated guy turned zombie. Then while touring a warehouse of sorts, there was a loud zombie banging around trying to find us. The army dude just said to stay low and quiet and do what he says. It was like being in a movie. It was all so well thought out. A bunch more stuff happened, but by the end, it turned out there wasn't a barracks for civilians. It was just a trick so they could terminate and use us for food. But right before that happened, a zombie horde attacked the base started coming from everywhere, under cars, through windows, etc. And the sergeant was dead. One of the lower recruits had a heart and terminated him to help us. But then he, a zombie, took him by surprise, and as he was getting eaten and just yelled, Save yourselves! Run! So at the end, our group of like 12 people were just running through a field with zombies coming from all sides. LDR. It was done by a drama acting group. It was so incredibly well done. But the coolest thing by far was the planted guy in our group who turned next to me and then was shot. The next year it wasn't there, and I was so sad. Story 30. I work at just a local haunted house, but we still manage to put on some pretty intense houses. We use a lot of completely dark passages that will light up when people are at a certain spot, and there will usually be something really fed up right in front of them that makes lots of noise. Well, anyways, last year as I was working this one house, I was stationed at that area, the gag was that I had a chainsaw, and when the lights went on, I was sawing into another person, and blood was spewing everywhere and just general loud noises. 
This one lady came through, and she was with her boyfriend and one younger child. It scared her really bad. She was the worst screamer that whole night, just a blood-curdling scream. After they left, I noticed when the lights came on for the next victim that there was cow all over the floor. The previous lady had been wearing a skirt, and I guess went commando and cow all over our floor from being scared. We had to shut the house down for like 20 minutes while we cleaned up it. It was disgusting.